But the theme was pink. And so I realized I, that I had to get my pink shirt and everything, and I wish I'd have known Jim's tailor there because he's, he's got a really nice one. But anyway, it's great to see everyone, Carol and Ann and all. It's great to be here today, and thank you. And this is truly the day that the Lord has made. And let us open with a, a moment of prayer. Take a deep breath. Center ourselves. So oftentimes we have a we, we need to get intentional with God, so... Let this be that moment. For this day where blue skies prevail, we give thanks. For each time our church door swings open, we give thanks. For the sweet music that resonates throughout this chapel, we give thanks. For this, our church family, we give thanks to you, O oh God. We witness your power and grace with awe. We see you in all creation. May our hearts be full of your spirit. May our eyes glow with your light. May our hands be made strong in serving you. May we reflect you in all that we do. In all we do, O oh God, we do for you. Amen. Thank you, friends. And Good morning again. It's great to be here. So we do have some announcements. Um, I'm going to start with a couple. If you notice in the bulletin, there's a list from uh, about signing up to, to get together and talk about music. And so that's the first one. It's kind of it's got a red message here. And Dorothy Clare is just uh, trying to meet with everyone in small groups and talk about hopes and needs and whatnot. Is that right, Dorothy Claire? That's good. So uh, please try to uh, select one. And, um, and then there is also a uh, summer fellowship get-together in the backyard. I don't, is that, whose backyard is that? Oh, okay. Oh, Lisa's. Okay. So Lisa's backyard, her address is there. I'm sure we should let Lisa know if we're planning to come. Please do. Uh, Okay, in the parlor there's a sign up, and if you have any questions. Um, also, our upcoming, I know Lisa's been working hard to get people active with the community meal, and it sounded like the July community meal was really, really well received, and a lot of people attended. And this community meal coming up on August 12th, um, Faithways is going to be involved in it. Uh, we haven't figured out exactly what that's going to look like, but um, we'll have Faithways people here for sure, and we'll have some, hopefully some food and all that kind of thing. Uh, I have another Faithways announcement, which is that we have gone live with our website. It's not finished. I noticed, like for instance, we want to link up with the UCCH website and we want to we want to make sure that we're connected there, which didn't get done the first go around. But uh, that stuff will be happening very quickly. But please look at it and see what you like about it. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns, let us know. Any other announcements that we're missing here? Anybody? Okay, we will have time to share joys and concerns. Uh, and so with that, let us let us begin our worship.
morning, everyone. Please join me in the prayer of awareness. O oh, Father of all fathers, Mother of all mothers, nutrient of all life, cosmic curator, with your help we open ourselves to know the Christ in us. Let us see and know the Christ in others. Let us trust in the Christ in all things. Let us nurture the spirit of boldness that all your creations may be blessed. Accept this as our covenant. Be with us in this endeavor. Hear us, know us, forgive us, love us. In the glory and awe of your presence, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tim, and everybody. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke. Someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus said, Who appointed me as judge or referee between you and your brother? Then Jesus went on to say, Watch out! Guard yourself against all kinds of greed. After all, one's life isn't determined by one's possessions, even when someone is very wealthy. Then he told them a parable. A certain rich man's land produced a bountiful crop. He said to himself, what will I do? I have no place to store my harvest. Then he thought, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build a bigger one. That's where I'll store all my grain and goods. I'll say to myself, you have stored up plenty of goods, enough for several years. Then take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, fool, fool, tonight you will die. Now who will get the things you have prepared for yourself? This is the way it will be for those who hoard things for themselves and are not rich toward God. May truth and light bear forth from these and all God's holy words. Amen. What does it mean to be rich toward God? That seems to be the goal here. In this gospel lesson today, Jesus says fools, those who build up material riches, will not be rich toward God. The questions for today are, what does it mean to be rich with God? What are the problems when we are not rich with God? And why does Jesus think this is so important for us and for God's kingdom? In today's lesson, we heard of just a little bit of the issues that come up when we focus on our earthly riches rather than our, our divine riches. This earthly riches pursuit can be problematic. And it begins with these brothers and their sort of disgusting display of envy and greed as they quarrel over their inheritance. Notice what they're quarreling over is something that never really was theirs, <laughs> but yet they want it to be theirs. And Jesus says to the brother who is asking him to intervene, man, this is not my problem. But Jesus gets it. We all know the feeling. We all know that this that idea that um, you know somebody else's problem becomes our problem because they want to talk to us about it and for Jesus is saying no this is not the problem this is your problem and the problem is with your perspective Jesus follows up that conversation with a parable parables are always these great teaching stories and this one's uh, uh, another good one and this teaching story today emphasizes what is wrong with our normal way of thinking about wealth. The story that Jesus tells us is, is what we would normally consider a very successful person. In most times when we're flipping through the TV or we're reading the newspaper or we see our neighbors or we know of something, it's that person that has abundance or has plenty of material things, or has all the right stuff that we tend to envy, that we tend to want to emulate and be like. 
And Jesus says there's a problem with having too much. There's a problem with that display of wealth. It's a problem with that type of riches. Uh, Jesus tells us this is a story about gluttony, about overabundance, and about hoarding. In this lesson, Jesus points out the weaknesses and falseness of the ideas of wealth. It's a common theme throughout the Gospels. We hear it over and over. One of the areas that uh, is that's one of my areas that I've worked with and learned from a lot is in Matthew 19, where Jesus says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. In other words, he's saying, that's impossible. It's impossible for a camel, as we know, to go through the eye of a needle. And in the same way, it's impossible for someone who views riches the way that a rich person does often to get to kingdom of heaven. That's how clear Jesus is when it comes to the difference between earthly riches and divine riches. This is stated over and over and over throughout our Holy Scripture. I'm pretty sure everyone in this room, correct me if I'm wrong, has their own story where earthly riches or money issues or inheritance issues have maybe gone bad, <laughs> haven't worked out the way that they want it to be. And whether in your own life or in the, in the lives of others or someone that you know, almost everyone has examples uh, where greed and overindulgence and the relentless pursuit of wealth have ended poorly, pardon the pun. Some of you may know comedian Jackie Mason has a funny joke that he says. He says, money is not the most important thing in the world. Love is. And then he says, fortunately, I love money. <laughs> he makes fun, in a way, of what Jesus is teaching. But really, really what he's doing is he's using satire to actually bolster this idea of what Jesus is saying. It gives us a moment to pause to think about uh, what we love. What it is that we love. Do we love material things? Do we love money? Do we love certain statuses? It's okay to like them. <laughs> you know, it's not horrible to like stuff. But love has to be for God and for others, for people. We have to put that first. God first, then others. Lives that are committed to earthly wealth and riches are poor lives. Incomplete lives. And no one is ever satisfied with that type of life. There's no true power in these types of riches. Yet, many of us spend an inordinate amount of our energies and times in these pursuits. At one time or another in our lives, most of us have spent the majority of our waking hours trying to get financially and materially ahead of the game. And most of us never actually, actually, in this way, none of us get ahead of the game. And that's Jesus' message. Jesus sees us and all of his followers pursuing and storing up earthly riches over divine riches. And he's teaching us that this is unfulfilling. This is a life that will not lead us to happiness. Through earthly riches, we will only know false power. Through our earthly riches and our material goods, we will only know false powers. God's powers come from the pursuit of God's riches. Evidence of God's uh, power has been uh, documented throughout history. God's power is evident in creation. It's evident in the transformation of lives and in the power to raise the dead. God's power is the missing ingredient. 
God's power is the ingredient that we need as individuals. God's power is the ingredient that we need as a church. God's power is what this country needs. And God's power is what the universe needs. And yet, we don't always focus that way. And not only that, it's available to anyone and everyone. And to make it even better, it's free. You don't have to give up any of the other stuff. The earthly mode, the one we normally pursue, is not working. And unfortunately, we're not helping people as the way we should to develop their lives in the divine model, the model which Jesus teaches. Suicide rates are sky high. I did not know this, but suicide is actually the leading death, the, it's the leading cause of death, um, according to the drug and alcohol group. It's just sky high. And violence in our country and around the world is sky high. And people's unhappiness, their inability to sleep, their inability to focus, their inability to, to, uh, to love one another, is at an all-time low. What's going on? We are trapped trying to live lives which focus on our ne on needs and material goods which will never heal us, never heal our churches, and never heal the world. It never will truly be satisfied. Okay then, so how do we witness God's power in our lives and how does it help us transform as individuals, as churches, and as world centers. God gives us the power to forgive, and this is an, an interesting economics. God gives us the power to forgive, and in return, we receive God's power when we forgive. God gives us the power to confess, and God's power comes back to us in the authentication of our confession. God gifts us with the power to accept and to cherish life, and in turn, we accumulate God's power in doing these things. The greatest power God gives us is the power of love. When we love, we become unstoppably powerful. This is a gift from our Creator. God loves us and gives us the power of love. It's an incredible power that can make change. Greater than any amount of wealth, greater than all the food, greater than all the other stuff we can give people, love is what can make the change and help change people around the world and help change the missions for our churches and help develop a world of satisfaction and a world of strength and a world of peace for all. I called this sermon Banking with God. Bank with God. Put your, put your stuff with God. Bank with God and encourage others to bank with God. Pursue God's riches. Accept what God has given boldly and boldly share that with those around you. It's a strange economics, it really is. But it's this economics that Jesus teaches and it is that alone that changes lives. Let us pray. God of abundant love and mercy, forgive us when we have strayed toward earthly needs be with us as we experience the joy and peace found in your riches and in following your way, the way of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, friends. And now is our time to share our joys and concerns, and then we'll have some prayers. And I would like to lift up Matthew Ray's today. Um, Matthew has... Uh, Many of you know that Matthew was in Bay State Hospital, that he had cancer, has cancer, 
Um, and he's given me, us permission to talk about it. Um, he started his chemotherapy treatments, which will go on for at least six months. And um, he was released. He's living with his older sister. And um, I'm going to see Matt today if anybody has anything they want to say to him. But uh, let's hold him for sure in prayer. He needs our prayers for sure. And uh, Barbara and I were talking about Carol Blodgett, Barbara's sister, who could also use our prayers today. Anyone else? Lisa? Um, prayers that our leaders in Congress will have an, uh, an awakening or an understanding of the damage that's done when the political game is put before people, specifically suffering veterans. That they, prayers for these veterans, but also prayers that our leaders understand the harm that's done when people are put second. Let this be our prayer. Lord, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. My uh, neighbor and friend who was in um, hospice care for a long time passed away yesterday, uh, so prayers for her and her family. Let this be our prayer for healing for your friend's family. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I'd like to lift up prayers for all the refugees around the world. There are many, many suffering people who have been displaced. Let this be our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh, let's not forget the people of the Ukraine. And winter is coming, and that's Russia's greatest ally has been historically. Winter wins their wars for them. And may the Ukraine all prevail and free people prevail. Prayers for peace in Ukraine. Lord, God, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. Martha? Uh, I ask for prayers for my son's girlfriend's two sons. Her youngest son um, developed diabetes, type 1 diabetes, a number of years ago. And on Friday evening, uh, they were headed to Maine, and she tested her older son, who's 12, and he now uh, has uh, type 1 diabetes. I have to say, it's very difficult for them to manage this, especially as the boys, you know, are moving into teenage years. It's a roller coaster scenario, keeping that sugar under control. And uh, my prayers go out to Sarah, and um, and she's pregnant with my granddaughter. And I just hope that the stress level can settle down somehow. Let this be our prayer for healing. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Muriel? I want to thank Lambs for that message. I'm praying for my two brothers, Vernon and Irwin, who are in disagreement and have called. And I got into to it. I pray for guidance, and I pray for love between them. It's the only way. Let this be our prayer. God, Lord, hear our prayer. Ann? Yeah. I hope the medicine first I help the face forward. For the homeless. Thank you for that prayer, Ann. Let this be our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray for Rita till she gets better. Rita? Prayers for healing for Rita. Rita. Let, let this be our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, everyone. Let us pray. Oh, God, hear our prayers. Hear those prayers that may be too difficult for us to share. Hear our prayers and know our needs. Be with us. Let us share in your power. 
power of love and grace and mercy. God, be with those who are in strife all around the world. Be with those in Ukraine and, and those from Russia who will be stuck in a, in a winter battle. God, we ask you to be with Carol Blodgett in her healing. Be with Matt Reyes in his healing. Oh God, we ask you to awaken the leadership of this country and the world to the needs of the people, that they make good decisions, loving and caring decisions. God, be with the veterans as well. God, be with Ed's friends and their family and their passing. God, be with the young children who have disability, diabetes, also with Sarah. Be with Rita in her healing. God, be with all those who are under-homed, homeless, or struggling to have enough. And God, forever we ask for reconciliation in all parts of our lives. Reconciliation amongst family. We ask you to bring a loving spirit to Vernon and Irwin. To give guidance and to give love as only you can do. Oh God, hear us now as we are in our silence. As we pray for the world, as we pray for others, and as we pray for this church. Hear us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, hear our Lord's Prayer as we share it today. Friends, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we invite our offering.
Friends, go forth seeking God's power, seeking God's riches. Bank with God. It'll be the way. And thank you for coming today. Please come for some fellowship afterwards. Thank you, Dorothy Clare, for the great music today. May God bless you all. Amen.